It was last year over Memorial Day weekend that this encounter occurred. I had gone camping by myself. Sometimes I do that to be alone. It was late at night. I was by the fire staring up at the stars contemplating life and all the things that happen. When a strange man walked up to my campsite. He was wearing an old military uniform. He had on a blue top with yellow chevrons on the side of his arms. A hat that had two sabers crossed and the number seven above them gray pants, and long black boots. He came closer and asked if he could sit by the fire for a bit to warm up. I would have rather been left alone, but this man looked lost, almost as if confused as to where he was. I knew that sometimes there were Civil War reenactments in the area. Even though I hadn't heard of any being done that weekend, I figured it was just I wasn't in the know of those sort of things. I agreed, so he sat down and put his white-gloved hands towards the fire. It was hard to see his face, even with the light. His hat sort of hid most of his features. We sat in an uncomfortable silence for a while, neither of us sure of what else to say. Finally, I decided to ask his name. When he talked, it sounded like a dirge. He told me his name was Gary Owen, and he had lost his horse. He had been knocked off of it during a charge into battle. Even though it was fairly warm out and the fire was blazing, his breath was visible like we were in the dead of winter. I offered to help him find it, but he politely declined, said it would be waiting for him at his destination. When I asked him where that was, he told me it was Fiddler's Green. He should have made it there already, he said, but was afraid he had taken a wrong turn somewhere. I had lived in that area for some time and had never heard of Fiddler's Green. Then he told me it was halfway down the trail to hell in a shady meadow. He had hoped that the field we were in was it, and when he saw me he thought I might know the way. I told him I didn't. Once I said that, he told me that he had to get going. Maybe he could find a helpful sailor to point him in the right direction. He got up to leave and said goodbye. When he turned around, I could clearly see the back of his head was missing. I got out of there as fast as I could. Although, I do hope that that poor soldier finally found his way to his resting place. My grandfather was in World War II. He was stationed at Jefferson Barracks for a while to assist with training new soldiers. It was some time after Pearl Harbor happened that this story took place. Grandpa was ordered to guard the munitions building along with several others. Day and night, he and a small group were to patrol the grounds to make sure no one broke in to steal any of the weapons that were there. One night, while he was on duty, his buddy who was with him told him he had to go use the restroom. There was no place in that building to go, so he had to go all the way over to another building to relieve himself. This meant that Grandpa would be alone for a while. There had already been some strange reports of spooks all over the base. Not really uncommon for a place that had been around since 1826. Grandpa continued his patrol for a bit when he saw someone walking towards him. He thought it was his friend returning from the bathroom, so he walked towards the figure. When he got about 20 feet away, the person called out to him, Halt! Who goes there? Grandpa laughed it off, figuring his friend was playing around and continued to walk. Halt! Who goes there? was repeated again. Grandpa realized the voice wasn't the same as his friend's, which concerned him. He wasn't sure who else would be around at that time of night, since it was really late. Doing his job, he continued forward to challenge the unknown person. As he got closer, he noticed the person had his arm out like he was holding a gun. Grandpa then gave his own challenge, asking who was there. The man only responded with the same demand of halt. Grandad became sick of the nonsense, drew his own weapon and pointed his flashlight at the man to give him a final warning. When the light reached the stranger's face, Grandpa said the man looked as white as a sheet, and where one of his eyes should have been was a large gaping hole that seeped out blood. That was enough for him. He turned and ran as fast as he could. He demanded to be taken off of guard duty and refused to work there again, even under threat of court-martial. 
I was stationed at Camp Hansen on Okinawa back in the 80s. The gate I'm talking about has since been closed down. You'll soon understand why. It was late at night and I was on guard duty. There hadn't been many people coming or going at the time, so I decided to take a smoke break. I went out of the guard station and lit up. When I first went out, there had been no one around, but once the light from my match went out, I noticed someone was approaching. He was dressed in full combat gear. He had on his fatigues, a helmet, equipment belt, and boots. With it being dark out, I couldn't see who it was. There was no one out in the field training at the time, so there was no reason for anyone to be dressed like that. At first, I thought it was maybe someone I knew playing a joke on me. Didn't really understand what the joke would have been, but I figured whatever was happening was harmless. The guy kept coming up, so I said hi, and waved at him. He didn't say anything back, but waved as well. I then tried to strike up some small talk. I figured if I spoke, I could find out who he was. Nice night, I said. Again, he didn't respond. He only pulled out a pack of cigarettes and kept walking towards me. Finally, he came really close, and in a voice that was almost a whisper, he said, Got a match? Okay, I thought. Once I light a match for the man, I'll be able to see his face and know who it is. I also noticed the air around me had suddenly turned real cold. I mean, looking back on it, it should have been a sign. But at the time, I didn't pay it much mind. I took one more drag from my smoke. The light from the cherry did nothing to illuminate his face. It was almost like there was a permanent shadow over him. Once I exhaled, I took out my matches and struck one. The light from the match was enough to show some of his features. There was blood on his face. His nose was missing. And there was a hole in his throat, which explained his whisper voice. I stood in horror, unable to move while he lit his cigarette. He took one drag and exhaled. He said, thank you, and vanished into thin air. I have never screamed so loud or run as fast as I did that night. Once I got back into the guard hut, I called the NCO in charge and reported the incident. All he said was, it was about time I met the ghost at gate three. Living near a Civil War battlefield isn't the best thing to do. I lived near one for many years when I was in Georgia. Lots of odd things happened. The usual footsteps, weird noises at night, and the sound of soldiers marching out in the field behind the house. The worst one that happened was one night during the summer of 2001. I was out behind the house with a group of friends around a fire pit, and we all saw this happen so I know it wasn't just me. It was dusk. The sun had set, but all the light hadn't yet gone. We saw a man out in the field, walking back and forth like he was looking for something. That wasn't unusual. People were in and out of that field all the time trying to find old war relics or whatnot. What was unusual was that the man was motioning to us. He would wave his hand like he wanted us to see something. It was pretty incessant, so we figured it might be something important. Since it was my home, I was designated to go and find out what he wanted. When I got close enough, I noticed he was dressed in a Confederate uniform. That was kind of odd, as there were no reenactments happening that day. I asked him if everything was alright, or if he needed help. He didn't say anything back, he only kept waving at me. I turned back towards my friends with an, I don't know what's going on look. They motioned for me to keep going, so I did. I got closer, maybe ten feet from the man, and asked if everything was alright again. This time he looked at me, and his face changed from a middle-aged man to a ghostly apparition with an evil smile. He said, What you're looking for is that way. Then he pointed off towards the ridge line. I looked towards where he indicated, but didn't see anything. When I looked back, he was gone. I hurried back to my friends as fast as I could. We put out the fire and continued our get-together inside the house. I never did go to find out what he said I would be looking for. Sometimes, even after death, military ghosts remain heroic. 
I was stationed at Pearl Harbor in Hawaii. Everyone probably knows what happened there and the brave men that gave their lives. One night, while the wife and I were asleep, we heard knocking on one of our walls. At first, we thought it was just the plumbing. We had just moved in and the house was pretty old, so we paid it no mind. The knock grew louder and moved around. And this freaked us out, but we didn't know what to do about it. Then the knocks began on our closed bedroom door. Finally, I got up to check out what was going on. When I opened the door, there was a white wisp at the end of the hallway. I told my wife that something strange is going on and to stay in bed. I walked down the hallway to investigate. When I got closer, the wisp formed into the shape of a man dressed in a naval uniform. He motioned towards my son's bedroom. Scared that he might have hurt my child, I ran in to find my kid laying unconscious on the floor. I yelled at my wife to call 911, which she did. The ambulance arrived and took him to the hospital. That's when we found out that he had had a seizure. He got treatment and is on medication now. But the fact that something like that had happened and we wouldn't have known until the morning still scares me. If that sailor hadn't warned us, who knows what the outcome might have been. Thank you for your company. Now that summer is close, I plan to do more of these. I hope you'll join me next time. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Be sure to leave a comment to let me know how you enjoyed the style of storytelling. Thank you for watching, and a big thank you to all the soldiers that gave their life in service for their country. See you next time. Bye.